Okay. It's filming. Cool. So do something cool. I'm cross stitching. I said do something cool. Hello and welcome to Imperfectly Me Crafts. I'm Mallory. Choose behind the camera. With his sound effects. If you haven't already, don't leave us untapped. Tap that like, subscribe, and notification bell so you never have to miss one of my crafty journeys again. And we are working for a cra on a craft for Ironmonger Brewing Company in Marietta, Georgia? Yes. Yes, Marietta, Georgia, uh, which is close to Atlanta. So we were there with, oh goodness, we had a bunch of friends that day. We had Shane's Craft Beer Reviews was with us. He's like one of my besties. I adore that man. And then Brian the Beer Snob joined us too. And then the channel Starving Actor Food Reviews. He also does beer reviews. Uh, Gabriel, he joined us too for our second flight. We had so much fun. Ironmonger's great. The space is fantastic. The beer was phenomenal. The beer was really good. They also do axe throwing. So if you remember us axe throwing, that was where we were. I survived guys. She tried to hit me, but I was too quick. I did like matrix moves. <laughs> they were very strict on the rules, so I couldn't throw the axe at him. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Ironmonger is great. If you get a chance to check them out, you really should. But for right now, you'll notice we're in a different location today. We are at Chu's sister's house visiting right now, visiting family. And uh, I actually don't have my Ironmonger beer with me. So I will be doing uh, Ironmonger beer uh, reviews. It's just, I have to do it a little later for now. I've got something to keep me busy. And we're gonna get right into the craft. So this is a metal grate in a black finish. We picked this up at Home Depot. I think it's actually meant to be like a vent cover or something to that I effect. I believe so. Uh, and they had a lot of different ones. This one I liked because of where the holes were for what I'm doing for Ironmongers. I've been toying with this one a lot because I'm going to be cross-stitching Ironmonger into the grate, but I had to design my lettering in order to make it fit. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, two sister, their house, they have two uh, yappy little dachshunds. We're all gonna hear them. <laughs> I spent a good amount of time figuring out my lettering. This is kind of my daily journal thing, but it has the dot, dot journal or whatever to, to it. And I bet she was playing tic-tac-toe, but wrong. <laughs> I had to figure out how I was going to shape all my letters and how I was going to place them and how many squares I actually had to work with. So it took a little uh, planning stage for sure to get that going. Even right now, as I've kind of plotted out the letters, all of these stitches you see here, these are all going away. These are just as a guide for me for while I'm going through. The way I did the eye here, I have a space at the top and no space here, so I will be stretching out that eye by one more thing. That's why I do this practice run where I check how everything looks. Oh, the dog's back, and they're pushing their way inside. Hi, doggy. No. <laughs> Who was it? Was that Eno? Yep. Yeah, that's Eno. I picked up some silver thread or grayish silver thread. And what I'm I going to- I would call that yarn. You're right. This is called yarn. <laughs> I apologize. But I'm not crafty, so I don't know. And then I'm using a tapestry needle. Um, so a tapestry needle is just like a regular needle, but with a larger hole and a larger gauge on it. Uh, it was more appropriate for the size of these holes. And it's really, 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 really impossible to thread yarn through a regular needle. It won't happen. <laughs> so tapestry needle it is. Um, I am gonna take that off because that's attached to my practice one and I should have grabbed a pair of scissors, which is unfortunate because I don't have a pair of scissors and I need one. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna cut this piece here. Oh, maybe I'm not. I think they could use with uh, some scissor sharpeners. <laughs> with yarn, when you purchase yarn, there are two ends to the yarn. And the way that it is spooled, you have two options. You can choose this little piece that comes out of the label and goes up and sticks into the top and pull that loose and 
that can be your starting point, or there's usually a little piece inside the edge that you can pull out. Therefore, as you keep going, it just keeps spooling from the inside and pulling out the yarn. That is the much easier way to do this. If you do this one, your yarn's gonna be flipping all over, rolling all over, causing you troubles. Unless you have a yarn bowl or a yarn bag, it's gonna be problematic. So pull from the inside, it's just much simpler. Thread my yarn, gonna pull out a bit. Ooh, look at that. That's the whole middle of the yarn right there. I also run into the issue that I would have to pull a very large amount of this yarn out as I start doing the cross stitch pattern here because as I move forward I'm going to run out of yarn. So to start I'm going to pull out a very very long bit. I'm going to go in here I'm going to start in the top corner of my eye and I'm going to start my X's. So go down through, come back up, and pull it through again. This being metal, I have found it to be a little simpler to go down from the top and then back up and then do the pulling of all the yarn through. Mm -hmm. But the whole point is to make all these little X's. It sounds like one of the dogs is knocking on the door over here. Hi, Kona. Oh, that's Kona. Oh, camera shy. <laughs> and yep. Oop. Nope. She's out. <laughs> I can still see your butt. <laughs> Quit looking at the dog's butt. Okay. <laughs> Do you, why don't you come around over my shoulder here? Just to give everyone a closer okay. view of I what's going on here. I got a closer here. view of your shoulder now. Chew. <laughs> I'm working on the stitches. I got one, two, three, four done, and I'm working on the fifth one. I'm just doing a regular old cross stitch, nothing fancy. The, the best thing for cross stitching, you don't want to end a stitch over here and then realize your next stitch has to be all the way over here. You don't want those big crisscrossy lines. If you can figure out a path that leads you to where your next stitch is, it wastes less yarn. You have less of a mess on the back of the sign and it just works a little better that way. Once I come all the way around over here, I'm gonna go down, back up, down, and then I'm gonna start on the bottom, same thing. I wanna finish the bottom close to where the R is gonna be. I'm gonna get through the rest of the eye now. So I go down through one corner and I come up through the other and pull through a whole bunch of yarn every time. It has gotten tangled a couple times, but I'm not pulling hard. It's never been tangled too bad. I just, you know, pull it out for a second, fix it, and go on. If I were, there's the dogs. Anyone who has an interest in learning cross stitch, it is very um, calming. Uh, I find it very meditative. I don't have to think too hard when I'm following a pattern. Uh, obviously, I designed this pattern myself first, but um, when you're following any kind of pattern, it can be really, really calming, really nice, easy, something you can do while you have the TV on or the radio on. But while you're driving. I don't recommend it while driving. Oh. But riding in a car would mm -hmm. be reasonable. I am gonna hop right to and show you guys when I start on the next letter or when I run out of yarn, whichever one happens first. <laughs> it's weird to be filmed from up there. Do I, do I look weird? Do you look like choose wifey? Well, yeah, I am that, so there oh, we yeah. go. <laughs> I'm crafting. <laughs> Need a beer. So we are going to start today with Ironmonger Brewing Company, but this one goes to 11. Ooh. It's an American IPA, 6% ABV. It's a juicy IPA, cranks the flavor to 11 with Amarillo, Mosaic, and Simcoe. My experience with Amarillo has not gone well for me, but I do enjoy Mosaic and Simcoe, so I'm excited to see how this blend of hops is gonna work. I covered the top of the can to keep my craft safe this time, but I covered my hands in beer, so yay. And I learned something new. Ooh, what's that? Simcoe hops is more of a piney flavor, mm -hmm. which is why I particularly don't like it. <laughs> but mosaic is more of a fruity flavor, which is why I like that one. So this would be a combination of those two. I don't remember 
the other third one. Was Amarillo. That. Yeah, I don't remember where that one was out in the wheel. <laughs> Yeah, we were checking out some flavor wheels for some of the major hops and trying to figure out how it all ties together. Um, craft beer is a constant learning experience. There's so many out there, so many variations, so many different ways to artistically create these beers that it's really fun trying to figure out, you know, how the paints all work together on the canvas. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's always a learning experience and hopefully you enjoy learning a little bit about it with us. So I am going to see how this one smells. First off, I get piney, and then there's a earthy quality, mm, like fresh turned earth. We are gonna dive right in. Let's see how it tastes. Oh, cheers, everyone. Oh, definitely piney, pininess first. Almost like spruce. Heady, strong, lingering hop on the tongue. When I breathe out through the nose, I get fruitiness. There's a lot going on in this beer. It's definitely a hop forward beer. I mean, it's made to be hoppy. The balance though is quite nice. Um, it's not overbearing. And the t I think the types of hops that they use, because I am getting a slight fruitiness, I'm getting a slight earthiness, I'm getting a slight pininess. I think they're pretty well balanced amongst themselves, which makes for a really nice drink. That must mean the armadillo, is that the third hop? <laughs> Amarillo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Armadillo hops. <laughs> that must mean that one on the flavor wheel is by the earthy. It could be. I'm not sure. We're going to have to look that up. Or, unless you know, comment below. Mm -hmm. They could take out the pininess. I would really enjoy this one. But you know, the bitterness isn't overbearing. No, it's not too bitter. No. It's, it's piney, but it's not. It's not a bitter pine to me. And the can does list the ABV, but it doesn't mention IBUs. Mm. I would probably put this in the 50 to 55 range for IBUs. Uh, like I said, it's, it's bitter, it is, but it's not overbearing. Very well balanced. I'm gonna enjoy this while I work on the craft. I was debating back and forth on something to go on the top and the bottom. A banner above and below of little axes that look like they're spinning. <laughs> and flying across. And I sketched out little axes in all the positions that I would need for them to go across. Right now it's seven squares by seven squares. I know I have 12 below and 12 above. I'm gonna place it in there. And then I'll be measuring out how many across I can do, how many spaces between. All of that is gonna be just a little math, nothing crazy, you know, not. Insano math or anything. Insano math. Insano math. It's different than that fuzzy math. <laughs> Insano. Yep. I'm going to enjoy this, but this one goes to 11 as I'm working on it. I wonder if our audience knows what the movie for this one goes to 11. Yes, if you know what movie made, you know, uh, crank it to 11 or I don't remember the exact line, but if you remember that movie, put it in the comments. I know some people will remember because that was funny as heck. Cheers, everyone. With regular traditional cross-stitching, um, they generally recommend thread approximately the length, an arm's length. I did a lot longer because the yarn is bigger and less likely to knot up on me. Or if it does not up, it's very easy to unknot it. With this, I didn't mind going much, much longer because one arm's length of the yarn would only get me about 15 to 20 full stitches. And I obviously don't want to have to change yarn that often. So I elected to pull long lengths through instead of going with small lengths. But I'll get as far as I can. And there's a knot right there and it was like, two, like not even two seconds to fix. It was very, very simple. So that first long thread that I was using, I got this far with it. So that's fantastic. I'll do about the same amount to finish out the rest. I want to see the back. You want to see the back, darling? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. When I finished up over here, I actually just wove it underneath all the stitches in the back and you can see the little tail end sticking out right here. Same on this side, the very tail end, I, I actually wove it through here and then down and it ends down here. I'm gonna put like 
two drops, three drops of super glue on the back of this at some point where that's connected and that'll stay put forever. And I don't have big old knots on the back, which is nice because knots are no fun. I'm gonna leave myself about, ah, say four or five inches back here that I can weave through and make sure that one stays stationary just like I did the beginning and this end of the first one. And then I'm just gonna carry on the way I was. So I'm gonna go through all the rest of the letters and I will see you guys when it's time to open a new beer and work on the little bitty throwing axes. Yay! See ya! Cheers, everyone. All right, guys, we are on day two. We're gonna start day two with a beer. This is from Ironmonger Brewing Company as well, who we're making this lovely craft for. This is called Dread Pirate Cranberry. 5.2% ABV, fruited wit beer with cranberry. The wits of insanity. <laughs> Anyone catching any references there to a movie, perhaps? Uh, so the last beer was, uh, turn it up all the way to 11. And I asked, you know, what movie is that a reference to? Same with this one. What movie is that a reference to? The Dread Pirate Cranberry and the Wits of Insanity. So. Peter Pan and Hook. Oh yeah, it's totally Peter Pan. <laughs> it doesn't tell me IBUs or anything. We're just gonna dive right in. Uh, but fruited, uh, fruited whip beer. Ooh, by the way. Yeah. For the last beer. Mm -hmm. I did look up what the IBUs were, according to Untapped. Yeah. And what did you say it was? I thought it was somewhere between... You said 50. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it 50. was 45. Nice. Fantastic. I wasn't too far off then. I like that. All right. Let's see. Ooh, fun color and super carbonated. Mm. I get the wheat scent, um, the graininess of it. There's a creamy scent, um, almost not quite vanilla, but like a vanilla scent. And after that, I get the, the fruit, the tart fruit scent. So we're going to dive right in. Let's see how it goes. It was a little more tart on the tongue than I was expecting. I was thinking wit beer first, cranberry after, but the cranberry hits the tongue first. Woke up the woke up my taste buds a little bit for sure but dulled your speaking tongue <laughs> <laughs> i didn't need the beer to dull my speaking tongue today i can't talk at all it's terrible and you do get kind of that wit beer feel like blue moon style but no citrus i'm not getting orange at all i'm, I'm way more getting the cranberry um personally Cranberry is not one of my favorite flavors. I haven't liked it in a really long time, but this is, this is passable. This is drinkable for sure. Now that is my own personal issue with cranberry though. So don't base your judgment off of that. I love cranberry. Yes, he does. He's a big fan. Yep. This is mine. I think it's really good though. And at 5.2, it's not too strong or anything. No. The flavor is well balanced enough that you could definitely have more than one. Oh, You're yeah. not overpowered no. by anything. Super, super drinkable. It's a nice switch for a wit beer. Yeah. You know, cause so often you just have that orange and coriander thing and that's all you get, right? More tart than you expected for a wit beer, but it's not overly tart. It's not overall, it's not tart. Right, <laughs> right. In comparison to a sour, oh, yeah. not even no. remotely close. But as far as whipped beers go, a little more on the tart side. I think that's really lovely. I'm going to enjoy this while I'm working. He took my glass, so I'll drink out of the can. It attacked me. I never drink out of cans. I forgot how. <laughs> As of yesterday, I finished up our ironmonger thing here. The next part's going to be the trickiest part. So I did my count about 17 times because I kept coming up with different numbers, but it, I have room for 83 stitches across. The design I made up for the axes those were seven, sti uh, seven stitch spaces across. Then you fi gotta figure at least one space between, so they're actually eight. So I'll be doing 10 of the little axes across that look like they're rotating on the top and bottom. 
As far as height, same thing. These were seven high. I have 12 stitches spaces to work with, so I'm going to do three at the top and two at the bottom. So I'm going with uh, just a black yarn for the axe handles, and I'm sticking with the same color I used on their name for the um, axe head. Get another sip of beer here, and we will pop the camera up top to watch me go. How's that sound? Good? Yep, more beer. <laughs> I always like it when we get more beer. Mm-hmm. It does make the crafting go a lot better. <laughs> oh, cheers everyone. Cheers. I decided since this was a cross stitch pattern, I could sit somewhere a little more comfy. So I got my little blankie on and I'm going to be enjoying some time here in the armchair doing some crafting. So that's fun. It's fine if the black yarn is going to show behind because once I'm finished with this, I'm going to be putting black felt on the back to hold it all together. So I don't mind if the black goes across from X to X, but the silver will have to be little pieces. You know guys, I think I might actually touch the edges of the bottom and top with some silver spray paint just to give it a little more dimension. And as soon as it's dry, we will finish putting in the axes. So when I'm crafting, I have a general idea of where I want a craft to go, but a lot of times I will change design ideas as I go. If I think of something that I think will look cool, or if I find out something won't work. It's a little more fly by the seat of your pants sometimes, but it does make, in my opinion, the art a little more real a little more personal and a little more me, which I like making it that way. Especially since these are gi gifts to places that I care about, I, I wanna make sure that I'm doing my very best to represent myself while giving something to them. Krylon Fusion All-in-One Metallic Silver Paint. All right, boys and girls. It is finally time to get these axes done. I know you guys probably can't see this, and I only have the one camera, so this is gonna be a little tricky, but this is what happens when I work with yarn. I don't know if you can see Lily sitting there waiting for her chance to get in with my yarn. I hope you can, because it's ridiculous. She's just really desperate to have my yarn. Lily, do you want the yarn? You can't have the yarn. No, no, you can't have the yarn. Oh, you're just gonna wait then. <laughs> uh, I think I'm gonna put a black outline around Ironmonger as well. I think it'll make it a little more clearly written now that the paint's on there and stuff. All right, we're down to our last two steps. First, we need a way to hang it. Ooh, as I'm dropping the spool here. So what I'm going to do is the top two corners. I'm gonna run this through and tie a knot, put a drop of super glue. I did super glue the backs of all the loose ends on the yarn. So that is all taken care of now. You'll also notice sitting on top of the craft right now, I have black felt. That is going to be the backing. Don't want to show you the finished thing yet. Here's the back though. Got all the little axes in. I did have the black going across, which is why I want a black backing now. And this is just black felt from the craft store. The height is perfect, but the length is my problem. What I'm going to be using to attach this on is not technically for fabric, but this is high strength 90 contact adhesive. Always read your instructions, first of all. I want to make sure I get the corners well. I can trim any excess that's sticking out to the sides. I'm going to quickly put on the second piece. All right, so I'm going to be allowing this to fully dry. And once it's done, I am going to flip it over and uh, trim the excess fabric from the edges using my handy dandy exacto knife. We're almost done! We're almost done! Yay! All right, guys, the glue is all dried, the felt is on the back, the hanger is on, the stitching is done, and here we go. Look, it's all finished. I'm so excited. I, it turned out super, super cute. I really like how it looks. 
and I hope Ironmonger and Marietta Georgia likes it too. I can't wait till I can get back down there and gift it to them. I gotta say, if you haven't been to Ironmonger, you have to. This place is amazing. Uh, great beer, great atmosphere, and axe throwing is a blast. So definitely worth checking out. If you haven't already, don't leave us untapped. Tap that like, subscribe, and notification bell so you never have to miss one of our crafty journeys again. Yay! Got another one done, guys! Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers, everyone. Bye. <laughs> I stole Chew's line again. Oh. <laughs> oh. You can go now. <laughs> Thanks, babe. <laughs> Come on out of there. Uh oh. I might have messed up. Did we lose anything? Ah. <laughs> I'm still in the market for a cameraman, guys. <laughs> tapestry needle. Is that the needle that the tapest monk uses when they make beer? Those are trappist monks. Oh. And so, no, they're not using tapest needles. <laughs> oh, forget it then. <laughs> All right, so this both has these. Uh, I'm gonna show you first how it gets tangled. <laughs> yes. Ta-da! Ta-da! Tangle! I want my beer back, Chew. Is that like a pickleback? Nope, I want my beer back, Chew. Why you gotta be so mean stealing my beers? Why you gotta be so mean? <laughs> Dork. I already get you too confused. You get me and your mother confused? Yep. So I'm still in the market for a new cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll show the craft in a minute. First, I, I, gotta, I gotta have a, yeah. Words are fun and goodly I use them. Um, <laughs> all right, get about 10 to 12 inches. Shut up, guys. Chew. Don't talk anymore. <laughs> I'm happier when you don't talk. <laughs> Is there anything else I need to tell them? Uh, they're all beautiful and amazing and awesome. They are all beautiful and, and amazing all and awesome. Smile now and give yourself a hug. Not you, them. I'll give you a hug later. <laughs>